in 138 openings. And it's summarized by the statement, different degrees of connection of male and female in different parts of him. Boy, now we're getting down to it. And the opening itself reads, the connection of the male and female aspects constitutes perfection. And this is how the influence is channeled. Let's just stop there for a moment. The connection of the male and female aspects constitutes perfection. Perfection. Perfection is not in the male alone. Perfection is in the connection between male and female. That is perfection. Therefore, all things done by the Orthodox in which only men are allowed to participate are imperfect. Do you understand? How many of you understand that conclusion I just said? Raise your hand. It just so happens that in Orthodox Judaism, women are not permitted to participate. Orthodox Judaism. I'm not talking about New Age Judaism or conservative or reformed Judaism. That means, according to this, that whatever that is being done is imperfect. Kara, Ilan, Belteshazzar, are you following that? Kara, do you have a comment about it, Ilan or Belteshazzar? In fact, the Zohar says, elsewhere, the Zohar says, wherever the female is not included, God is absent. God is absent wherever the female is not included. Thus, such orthodox rituals as, as the, uh, the minion, the ten men that are required to make prayers uh, efficacious, are imperfect because only men are allowed to be in it. You can see why the rabbis are so deadly opposed to spiritual Judaism and to the, these aspects of the esoteric oral Torah. Again, it says the connection of the male and female aspects constitutes perfection. And this is how the influence is channeled. Accordingly, wherever the male and female are closer together in and of themselves, this indicates a level of perfection that requires no work on the part of the lower creations. The further apart they become from one another, the more it indicates a want of perfection and that work is needed there on the part of the lower creations. Whoa. I feel like stopping right there. How do you like that? Boy, when, when Yeshua HaNasri spoke out against the scribes and the Pharisees, the Orthodox Jews of his time, saying that they hold the keys and neither go in or allow anyone else, this is what they're talking about. This is what he was talking about. And it is as true now as it was then. The Orthodox even the so-called Hasidic Orthodox seek to maintain that separation at a great distance between the male and the female, and therefore are courting imperfection. It goes on, there are two parts to this proposition. Part one that begins with the connection of the male and female. And part two, which begins with accordingly, etc. So let's break it down. Part one, the connection of the male and female attributes constitutes perfection. Now this is what this is what the uh, the Ramchal has to say about that. This is clearly so, because male and female are the mystery of Chesed and Gevura kindness and judgment, and the connection between them brings sweetening 
since kindness sweetens the strict judgments. Moreover, the female is the receiver, mekabel, while the male is the active influence, mashpia. The entire function of evil is only to separate the receiver from the source of the influence. Listen to this. The entire function of evil is only to separate the receiver from the source of influence, to separate the male from the female, to keep them at a distance. And what, pray tell, do the Orthodox Jews do? Do the Orthodox rabbis do? They keep the male and the female at a distance. No wonder it says elsewhere in the Oral Torah that until the Messiah comes, most of the rabbis are from the side of evil. Of course. Now don't just hear this as agreeing with what you probably already think, which is fine. But hear it as to why it's agreeing. What it is it's saying that makes the agreement. Because what it's saying is very profound. The farther away male and female are, well, when male and female are right up against each other, that is perfection. The farther away they go from each other, the less and less perfection there is. And that movement away from perfection comes from the side of evil. Therefore, the rabbis seek to increase the separation between male and female, and therefore must be from the side of evil. How many of you recognize that? How many of you understand that? Raise your hand. Now, don't ever go repeating this to a, to a rabbi. You'll have a hemorrhage. But that's what it's saying. The entire function of evil is only to separate the receiver, the feminine, from the source of influence, the masculine. From this you may infer the converse, that when male and female are joined, it is because evil is powerless to distance the receiver from the source of influence. It follows that the connection of male and female is Perfection. Wow. Wow. Let me, let me again remind you that this great work by Rabbi Chaim, Moshe Chaim Luzado, the Ramchal, remained untranslated for hundreds of years and was largely ignored and, in fact, in some ways condemned by the Orthodox rabbis. You can see why. You can also see why Rabbi Moshe Chaim Luzaro was accused by the Orthodox rabbis of his time as being a heretic and sought to bring him up on charges of heresy. But he fought against them and won. <clears throat> Part two of the statement is, accordingly, wherever the male and female are closer together in and of themselves, this indicates a high level of perfection. And he goes on to explain that. In the light of what we have said, this should be obvious, for the whole purpose of man's service is to bring about the coupling of the male and the female aspects in order to conciliate and sweeten the aspect of judgment. Listen to this. Let me repeat it word for word. Listen to this. It says, the whole purpose of man's service is to bring about the coupling of the male and the female aspects. Do you hear it? In Yiddish to hear? Do you hear? The whole purpose of everything that man does in service to God is to bring about the union of male and female. The whole purpose. Not to be holy, not to keep kosher, not to make judgments on everybody else who isn't as holy as you are, but to bring about the coupling of the male and the female. 
this is why sexuality is among many mystical Jews considered so potent sexual union between a male and a female is a physical theurgic action of this inner spiritual coupling of the male and the female if that sexual intercourse is done with that kavona if the male is, is in his mind eye saying I am now coupling the male and the female together by having sexual intercourse with this woman. And if the woman is thinking, I am now coupling the male and the female together by having sexual intercourse with this man, indeed, that's what's happening. And that's the whole purpose of all service, not just of their intercourse. The further apart they become from one another, the male and female, it says the distance between them increases gradually level by level in the parts of, of Atika Kadisha Atika Kadisha the ancient holy one in the parts of, of Atika Kadisha the ancient holy one that is the first Sephira there is a great connection with male and female both everywhere in the parts of in the case of Arik Antin the sixth sephira, the male is on the right and the female is on the left, but still in one parts of. Abba and Ima are male and female and are two parts of them, yet they emerge as one and dwell as one. Are you picturing this in your mind's eye as it's being described? I hope you are. This is beautiful. In the case of Arikantin, the first Sestira, the ancient holy one, the male is on the right and the female is on the left, but still they are in one parksus. Abba and Ima are male and female, and are two parts of him, yet they emerge as one and dwell as one. Thus, man's main service lies in bringing about the union of Tiferet and Malkut, the sixth and tenth Sephiris, respectively, Zer Anpin and the Nukva, the fallen Shekhinah. Huh? God damn. Accordingly, the further apart they are from one another, the more it indicates a want of perfection, and that work is needed there on the part of the lower creatures, ourselves. I'm going to stop there, because I think that's a great place to stop. That concludes, incidentally, that opening. Now, let me ask for comments, questions, feedback, reactions. Raise your hands. Oh, God, I think that was fantastic. Kara, go ahead. Yishai, go ahead. Miriam, go ahead. Kara, wonderful sheer. This is such a beauty and harmony in seeing the Sephiris in this way. Yeah, isn't it though? Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Baruch Hashem. Thank you very much. Yeshai, go ahead. Miriam, go ahead. Miriam can't get any clearer than that. You better believe it. We are called and are actually the only means by which the bride and groom can meet each other and couple. No wonder the groom is so eager and the bride so full of joy and excitement as the Shabbos bride is. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Just beautiful, Miriam. Thank you. Yeshai, go ahead. Oh, what, a, what an opening. My God. Can't get any clearer than that. Yeshai, go ahead. Yeshai. Korea bang and bot go explosion. So damn powerful. The further away female is separated from the male, the more imperfect. And the more we have to work on that to perfect it. Absolutely. Very good. Excellent. Baruch Hashem. Great. Whoa. What a class this morning. You did. Re it is recorded, right, Miriam? We just don't post it, right? Ah. God damn, you know, I'm thinking of how we could possibly post it, you know? 
Well, let's just think about that under special topics. I think so. And let's make the title of it, Without the Union of Male and Female, There is No Perfection. All right. Thanks, Mary.